So time to solve an exam question using McCabe Thiele's graphical method. And we will use the standard method uh, where we have uh, everything known, xt, xw, and zf, and we know the feed condition q, and we know the reflux ratio. So what we should do is to draw the diagonal, if that isn't drawn already, and then we draw the upper operating line, the q line, the lower operating line, and then we draw steps, and the number of triangles we make in the diagram is the number of equilibrium stages. And this is the problem that you should solve. So read this and start trying to do it yourself and we will go through it piece by piece. So let's identify the numbers here. We have a feed with 20 mol percent ethanol, so ZF equals 0 0.20. Uh, distillate should hold 75 mol percent, so XD is 0 0.75. A bottom should hold 2 mol percent, so XW is 0 0.02. Uh, it's 25 percent saturated gas in the feed, so we need to evaporate 75 percent. So Q equals 0 0.75. The reflux ratio is 2.5. The overall trap efficiency is 45 percent, so eta is 0 0.45. And we have uh, column equipped with a reboiler and a partial condenser and we need to calculate the physical trace and the optimal feed location counted in physical trace. And then there is a theory, theory question and then the two extra questions. What is the minimum reflex ratio and the energy used in the reboiler? So let's write that up here. These are all our numbers and these are the equations we need to use. So let's start with the upper operating line. Uh, R equals 2.5 and XD equals 0 0.75. Uh, I think the easiest way to draw the upper is to know that, well, it is on the diagonal and in XD. And on the Y axis, if X equals 0, then Y equals XD divided by R plus 1. And in this case, we get 0 0.214. And we can draw the line. And we can check this. Uh, the slope should be r divided by r plus 1, and that is 0 0.714. So let's draw a triangle here. If I take three ste steps right, I need to take 2.15 up, and that's uh, 0 0.716. So that's OK. Time for the Q line. Zf equals 0 0.2. So we find the point on the diagonal there. And then the slope uh, we need Q for, and that's 0 0.75. And the slope is Q divided by Q minus 1. And we get minus 3 at the, as the slope. So one step left should be three steps up. So that's a line like that. Time for the lower. XW is 0 0.02. So we find the point on the diagonal. And then we should draw a line through the intersection between the upper and the Q line. And that's a line like that. And now it's just to step and count. So we switch between the mass balance and the equilibrium, the mass balance, the equilibrium, the mass balance, the equilibrium, and so on. And there we have drawn everything. And time to think about the reboiler and condenser. Reboiler is one equilibrium stage outside the column. And the partial condenser is one equilibrium stage outside the column. So the partial condenser is up there. And totally we have one, two, three, four, five, six, not entirely seven. Uh, so more than six and less than seven equilibrium stages in total. Now, we need to calculate fraction of equilibrium stages as well. And we will do that using horizontal lines. So uh, we will look at the triangle we have drawn, and then take the distance here from this vertical line to immediately above the intersection between the upper and lower operating line, and compare that distance with the entire distance of that uh, triangle, and the same with the lower. So a divided by uh, the small a divided by large a here. You could do it by b divided by b here, but we won't do that. But there is, of course, a potential problem here because, well, uh, you don't get exactly the same values. There are books uh, about distillation that actually 
calculates it both ways and then take uh, an average of the two. But in our course, it just stops with taking a divided by a, and that's fine. In our case, if we look at the feed, uh, it's more than four, uh, but not entirely five. And uh, a divided by a, there is 0 0.89 approximately. And then we have to remove one because we have a partial condenser up there. And the total, well, it's not six, uh, well, it's not seven, but it's six point something. So six plus a divided by a, and a divided by a, there is 0 0.52. And then we have to remove both one for the partial condenser and minus one as well for the reboiler. Before we go any further, let's consider what we did here. We switched between using the upper operating line to using the lower operating line when we passed above the intersection between the two operating lines. So the upper operating line is a mass balance, right? So that gives us the molar composition in the gas from the feed location as a function on of x, so the liquid composition on the IG ideal tray above the feed location. But when we pass the feed, there is an inflow there, right? And that stops the operating line uh, from being valid because th that's not a valid mass balance an anymore because we have a new feed coming in. And we need to start using the lower operating line. So the triangle at the feed location has one corner on each operating line. And we can switch between the two anywhere. We don't need to switch just uh, where we have the intersection between the two operating lines. But if you think of it, when can you draw the largest triangles? Well, you can draw the largest triangles if you change from the upper to the lower operating line as soon as you have passed the intersection of the two lines. That's the optimal feed location. Then you get the fewest triangles and you get the fewest equilibrium stages needed. Using overall tray efficiency, the physical trays needed in the column, we have totally 6.52, but we need to take away both the partial condenser and the reboiler. So we get 4.52 equilibrium stages in the column. And to get the physical trays, we need to divide that with the overall tray efficiency 0 0.45, and we get 10.04. But 10 won't be enough, so we need one more, so we say 11. Always round up. Uh, and if we ask for physical trace, you should always answer in integer. So you can't have 1.5 chairs, for example. So you can't have 1.5 trays. You need to have an integer number. The optimal feed location was 3.89 when we have deducted the partial condenser. And if we divide that with the overall tray efficiency 0 0.45, we get 8.6. And we round that up to 9. If we ask you for the number of equilibrium stages, we want to give you a decimal answer. Otherwise, you don't get full credits. Uh, we should check the minimum reflux ratio as well. And the Q line is very important there. You draw the Q line and then you think of the upper operating line. You draw the upper operating line through the intersection with the system curve there, like that. And then you can draw steps. And you can't pass this point here, right? Uh, so you get an infinite number of triangles, an infinite number of uh, ideal stages. And uh, if you look at the intersection there, it's 0 0.42. And if x equals 0, then y equals xd divided by r plus 1. So you can calculate r there as 0 0.76. Note here that the minimum reflux ratio is not always given by the intersection between the Q line and the system curve. Uh, in this case here, you get uh, a tangent here to the system curve, and you can never pass that. So here you get an infinite number of equilibrium stages for a larger reflux ratio than if you would have drawn it through here. 
So if you try to draw it through the intersection here, then you end up with an uh, operating line that goes on the wrong side of the system curve, and that's not allowed. Lastly, uh, there was an extra question about the energy demand in the reboiler. And only V-bar is evaporated there. So you need to calculate V-bar by setting up mass balances. Uh, and then you multiply it with that with the evaporation enthalpy. And if you want to do that carefully, you should use an enthalpy composition diagram. But in our course, let's do something simple. Look up uh, the approximate evaporation enthalpy and just calculate it. The energy demand in the condenser, well, if it's a partial condenser, only L, the liquid going down again, is condensed. And if it's a total condenser, the entire flux is condensed. So it's important to keep track of that.